So this is my first um, video explaining how to make our binder pattern. We've released the patterns for free on our website and the link will be in the description. I'm starting with our um, mesh underlay. This is a power mesh that's somewhat lightweight um, and it's cut in the stretchy direction as a full bodice and then there's a stable layer that goes over top of that that's cut in the opposite direction of the stretch. I'm going to pin these two layers together laid flat and then top stitch them together with a zigzag. I like to place my pins perpendicular to the seam. In this case, I'm not sure why I did it on the diagonal, but maybe the fabric was just behaving that way, or it was the, um, the placement of my body trying to sit back so that you're not looking at the top of my head, and this was just easier. Um, I'm going to use a zigzag to stitch these two layers together, and this fabric can be tricky if you are just using what you have, use the newest needle that you have, um, and do some seam testing with your scraps. You'll want to use a wider and shorter zigzag than the default. You want to give yourself the most opportunity for stretch. Um, a three-step zigzag is nice if you have it. I tend to like that just because there's more stitches and possibly less breakage or bunching. But do whatever you can um, with your machine. If you're having trouble getting stitches to land you may find that you need a smaller needle. Universal is better than ballpoint. And Microtex or, or Sharp in a small size would be even better. I use this little machine for um, zigzags and buttonholes. I picked it up at Walmart. I really do like the electronic machine. I, I think there are some improvements. I think it was about $200 and it really has done well for me over the past few years. I bought it because it had the three-step zigzag and because I wanted to try an electronic machine, but really anything that is from the 50s or later should have a zigzag and you should be able to stitch this entire binder with a zigzag if you need to. Hold your tails when you start your stitch just so your needle thread doesn't pull out. Go slow, keep your layers flat and somewhat taut but don't yank on your fabric at all if you can help it. Um, I just decided to change my settings here a little bit, and you can do that. This layer won't show, so the only thing that will show is if it's bunchy. You want it to stretch as much as possible and hold together. It doesn't need to look perfect. I like to follow one um, pattern piece with another so that I don't have to cut my threads. Um, you can see my stitches aren't landing perfectly here, but for the most part they're doing okay and I wasn't worried about it. Um, my thread breaks here and it happens. Sometimes you just have to <laughs> re-thread and move on. Don't get nervous. Don't start to worry that you're doing it wrong. Sewing machines smell fear and it won't help anything. So I'm just re-threading here and um, keep going.
Next up is shoulder seams. I'm going to take my overlays, which are the longer bodice pieces, and stitch my shoulders right sides together. Um, you can definitely pin if you feel more comfortable doing that. I won't. But I will pin my underlays together because I'll be stitching four layers at the shoulder. Now in this video I have put right sides together on the jersey underlays and then um, put the both mesh overlays on top. But in my blog descriptions in those photos the mesh is on either side of the jersey underlay. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as your necklines are corresponding. So here the V is meeting the V and then the back of neck they will they'll be together when the f mesh is flipped over so it's probably easier to do it as I've done in the written instructions mesh on either side necklines corresponding it really doesn't matter as long as your jersey right sides are together and I'm pinning because these layers are pretty unruly. This gray fabric is one of my more rolly but not my rolliest fabrics. Um, so just be cautious of that when you're shopping. If you're shopping in person, the, um, the attendant at the fabric store will probably warn you if the fabric is particularly rolly. And it just can take a lot of time to massage all your layers and make sure everything is lining up. Okay, so I'm going to open up my underlay and lay the um, right side up and the neckline open. And then I'm going to place the overlay right sides down with the neckline matching. So now at this neck there are three layers of fabric and we're going to stitch all of them together. I'm offsetting my seam allowances here just to reduce bulk. So I'll pin both sides of the seam allowance down and then pin around the entire neckline. And I'm going to just serge on at the back of the neck and stitch around the entire neckline. Um, I'll overlap my serge by at least an inch on the, on the other side of the neck. I mean, when I reach my starting point. And I'll just be mindful not to clip 
that starting surge with my knife and that should make it very sturdy. This won't look like a perfect v-neck when you're done stitching it, but when it's on the body it's under quite a bit more um, compression and it will open up and lay flat. Okay, so I'm going to pull my overlay through the neck hole and then lay the garment flat and it's starting to look like a real thing. Um, I'm wrapping the shoulder of one side around the shoulder of another side, the opposite side, and offsetting my seam allowances in the same way they were when we so stitched the neckline. And then I'm going to pin armpit to armpit on that side and we'll stitch the armhole. Okay, so now that that armhole is stitched, I'm pulling the other um, armhole just to turn this back right side out. And you'll see that one is finished and one isn't. So we will wrap the unfinished shoulder around the finished shoulder and pin those seam allowances again and stitch the other armhole. So once again, we're pulling on that um, arm, armhole, shoulder seam, whatever, and turning the entire garment right sides out. So I'm going to um, pinch the armpit of one armhole together so the overlays are 
one way and the underlays are the other way. I'm going to pin right at that point where the seam allowances meet and I'm going to fold the overlay to one side. I use tweezers to make sure that the overlay um, is all together and sort of standing up above the um, above the underlay and then I repin. I'm always going to stitch down from the armpit. Um, so that's, I always put my pins on the side up that they would be if I was stitching down from the armpit. So I'm pinning the, um, the same thing on the other side. I'm folding all the seam allowances towards the underlay and I'm using tweezers to set the overlay just above the underlay and folding it in the same direction as it is on the other side. Um, you don't have to be as precise about this as I am, but I'm just trying to make this garment as neat as possible at the underarms. Okay, so I'm pinning the bottoms of the overlay together and then I'm going to pin the underlay pieces, the bottoms of them, one inch up from the bottom of the overlay. So this little throwing star ruler here I use to just take that one inch measurement and then I'm organizing the layers so that they're meeting at the one inch mark on the overlay. So these side seams we're stitching down from the armpit. We're stitching all layers. The underlays will end an inch before the overlays but everything is being stitched together. So take, a, take as long as you possibly need to pin these layers together and make sure that everything is laid flat and that there are no holes in the side of your binder.
Okay, so this is the most difficult part of this project. You're starting a seam in a very bulky place. So you can see I'm sort of holding the, um, the armpit at the down to the deck of the sewing machine and sort of pulling it through. Not too hard, but I'm just trying to make sure that everything is staying flat and moving forward. Be sure that you've left a tail at the armpit. Don't click, click that off. You, um, you need to pull that tail in before you move on. Um, if you have clipped off a tail, just surge on at that spot and leave a tail and then pull it through just to make sure. If you're using a sewing machine, you can either backstitch at the start or come around when you're done sewing that seam and backstitch um, after the fact. This is me pulling my tails in. I pull them um, flush and then trim them and then I use a dull bodkin like a tapestry needle um, to pull them into the inside of the serge, preferably between the two needle stitches, but <laughs> don't worry too much about it. Um, we're going to go back and bar tack this, this stress point when we have a chance. Here I'm just sort of massaging my seam allowances to make sure that they are facing the direction that they're stitched in. Um, it, it makes a difference, I think, but uh, don't fuss about it. I'm also clipping into my serge, but not all the way um, to the first needle, just so that I can offset seam allowances at the hem and I'm not folding them up on top of each other. Okay, so I will pin those seam allowances offset first, and then I'm going to use my little throwing star ruler to fold the overlay over the underlay pieces by one inch.
So this is my hem all pinned. Um, I'm just going to bar tack my underarms before I move to a different machine. So what I do here is I drop my feed dogs and I put my widest three step zigzag in my settings. And because the feed dogs are dropped, it won't move, the machine won't move forward. And this allows me to contr give a really controlled bar tack to stabilize these, this join. Um, in the written instructions, there's a link to a video that I have that shows this more clearly. So here I'm just trimming those stitches from the bar tack. We're nearly done. Alright, I tried to set up my um, cover stitch on my industrial serger, but my cable management is <laughs> very static, so I couldn't do it, and I have this view here of the cover stitch. Um, I'm just stitching around the bottom of the entire garment. I do like a cover stitch, but a zigzag would do just fine right here. I do like to tie off my ends um, when I use a cover stitch and if your zigzag doesn't back stitch, if you're using a zigzag, you may also want to tie off your ends. I just want to thank anyone who sat through this with me. I um, Let me know if you have any questions, and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you so much. Bye.